Hi, thank you for inviting me to this and to Korea. You know, um, I've been born in USSR, that's the country where you were not supposed to go abroad. So when I was a kid, this was to go overseas was something from different life. And that's why m many Russians think of, uh, you know, different countries and cultures, something like M Martians, someone who lives completely different life style. But listening to the stories whole day, I realized how much in common we have no matter where we live. And that brings thought that, uh, well, probably we experience the same kind of problems when we are young, the same kind of uncertainty about what should we do, how it all come, will come up. And uh, I want to share my story, and it's not because I want to boast or not particularly because I want to uh, advertise what I do, but just uh, to give you an example of how you can grow from really small thing to a big one, and uh, hopefully it will encourage some some of you uh, to do the same. So, um, when I was uh, comparatively young, uh, I didn't know what to do. I tried a lot of stuff, mostly in arts. I was musician. I was uh, writing some stuff. I was in theater, etc. But every time I tried something new, I didn't feel like this is what I'm going to do. And when I was playing music, I thought, well, probably I'm not the next John Lennon. And uh, that was really depressive. <laughs> so uh, at some point, I, I decided, OK, let's uh, throw out ambitions. Ambitions, I just want to do some small thing just for people to have fun. And my first project that was like 2009 was pocket poetry. I really hated what people read in Subway, like, you know, the stupid magazines. And there is some, such a cool thing as poetry and literature, Russian or not Russian. Why don't you read this? Why we forgot poems and stuff? So I wanted to give all these people nice literature that we have. And that's how I came up with the idea of uh, printing small poems on cards, as you may see in uh, this horse mouth, with Russian poems of Alexander Pushkin, which is a famous Russian poet. So people can find it. I was putting it, it everywhere on the streets, like on the benches in the park, and the lamp posts, and elevators, in monuments like here. And I made the photographs and put it in my blog. And a lot of people uh, seen it and said, wow, we want to do the same. This is such a cool thing. So I began inviting people to random cafes all over Moscow, where the city where I'm from. Uh, so they can come, take 50 cards, and spread it all over the place, give it to people, etc. And uh, it, it happened weekly, every week. And more and more people were coming to these meetings. And newspapers, television was making reports about this. And uh, every time it was really tough to find a place where we can gather and do this. Uh, you know, I, I had to rent some old theater buildings, some other places, because at some point there were like 50 people. And, and uh, I also made some movie nights and some other events. So it was obvious that it would be cool to have my own place where I can do this kind of stuff. And uh, that, that idea was in my head for some time. And then I found some friends who were ready to invest money little money uh, into something and I said why don't we rent a space and make it something like space where you can hang out every day and do such projects as this maybe it's not only me who is trying to find a place and we rented a small building small space you see there is a tree growing and this ladder and it all looks like a small tree house it's just 50 square meters and the idea was that all the people who like it we rent it together like friends uh, building tree house and hanging out there and uh, so this has happened and uh, on the exit there was a suitcase uh, old suitcase uh, of money so people were dropping as much as they want and can and any time they can for this pe place to survive. We still had to pay rent and buy some other stuff, tea, coffee, cookies. And actually, we 
every month we were profitable, though. Everyone was saying like, oh, you will not survive, you will, be, you will be closed in a month. But somehow I created kind of atmosphere that of sincerity, of common, of things that we're doing together, that people were feeling really uh, responsible for everything that goes on there, and money as well. People were helping a lot, we were hanging out there, and it was cool. And within a year, it was so popular that there were no more space. It was so crowded there that it was obvious that we need, oops, it's too early, was that we need uh, to do something else. And um, so we literally went out the street in search of the new space. And on one of the windows, there was a sign like, this space is for rent. And that's, we entered just to see how, how this rental process worked because we didn't know that. And uh, we like the space so much. Uh, you see there is a lot of windows and brick walls. It was on the second floor that I wanted to, sh to rent it. But the rent price was so high, like five times higher than in a tree house. And the space was so big that it was obvious that we need to hire people so they can make coffee, tea, and do other things. So that I was afraid that this system of free donations would not work on that scale because it was like two time, ten times more expensive now. And I was thinking for some time, how can I charge people money to be, to, with money to be sure that we will survive every month, at, but still preserve this feeling of community of something that we do together. And that's how, as a, as a joke, I came up with the idea that, well, I should just uh, ask people for, to pay for every minute they spend there. It was absurd and crazy idea, but I thought that uh, this craziness would work. And actually it worked. It had immediate success. We had a lot of people coming, and from all over Russia I, had, I began to get letters like, wow, this is such a cool thing, I want to open it in my town. And just within two months we opened second one, then in a, another month, third one in different city, and so, uh, well, I opened 12 of them in first year. And um, we also, there also began to appear some copycats all over Russia, and uh, finally there are like maybe 2,000 or 3,000 places like this all over the world uh, uh, that is called Anti-Cafe, which is I don't like this definition, but still it is. So, well, this is w how they look. It's a cozy space where people hang out, can hang out. So there is a coffee and tea for free and cookies and some apple. There is a lot of events going on there, lectures, movie nights, everything. And it's, uh, for a lot of people, it's the first place where they, where they express themselves, organizing some event or just, it's the first place where they went when they grew up and make new friends. And um, in 2014, we opened one in London because it was obvious that we were going to need to go abroad. And it was, uh, again, a huge success. We had a queue like for an hour, and uh, every world media told about us, BBC, CNN, and others. And uh, then, so it is, is, uh, it is all because of cool people who are attracted by this place and work there and run it. We give a lot of freedom for people to run their zipper blots as they want. So, th and um, a lot of people who were coming, they felt like, wow, this place is like Dacha. Dacha is a summer house in Russian. It means that it is really cozy, and you feel like you're at home, and there are so many nice people to whom you can talk freely. You don't just sit on your table, but you uh, can easily come to anyone and make friends and talk to them. And uh, so we, the idea of making it literally summer house uh, appeared, and I found a partner with whom we built uh, a huge building outside of Moscow, like 100 kilometers, and it is called Bullet of Dacha. And it's a big hotel with the ground floor. It is as like Zifferblatt, and on the on the second floor there is uh, rooms for people to stay. So, if uh, in Zifferblatt average time people spend is two hours here, it's two days, and we kind of you know use this 
experience that we gained in Zifferblatt of creating coziness and openness into this uh, bigger thing where people stay much longer. We have a living room and a fireplace and oven where we bake our bread. We have a big dining table where everyone sitting and dining together, we prepare food and three times a day we just put it there. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks. And um, uh, everyone who was coming and staying at Bullet of Dacia was saying, wow, I wish I would never go out of here. I want to stay here forever. And we thought, well, why don't we do that? And that's how we came up with the idea of building our own village so people could buy houses and come there on weekends or stay there, live there full time. And we created um, this kind of architecture so people can buy these houses, minimalistic design. And we're going to build about 70 houses. And it's already some of them are built and people are already living there. So it's cool. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks. Uh, well, yeah. So that's my story. And again, I would like to say that, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes small, really small things such as uh, pocket poetry could put you on a rails that will bring you somewhere which you would not never expect when you begin this. So don't be afraid of trying new things. Don't be afraid to be foolish and stupid and uh, ridiculous. Just try it and see how people react. You will believe your sense of reaction because I think it's important. You know, you can stick on one thing, on, on, on a, like me, for example, I was imagining myself a musician. Sometimes I do it uh, still, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's just, my idea, but people don't think that way. But pocket poetry immediately became bigger than me because people were doing it without my, well, with my help, but it would have happened without me. And uh, uh, this pocket poetry thing was happening not only in Moscow, not only by me, there were local communities organizing it by itself. The same thing with Treehouse, it became so much bigger that I could only wash some dishes for people, for new people to come. And the same thing with Zifferblatt. They were opening with or without us. And so now we have building a village. And the second step, next step, going to be uh, starting my own country. Thank you.